Yellowstone discovery shows super eruption actually decreasing. Two newly discovered super eruptions have been found hidden in Yellowstone National Park's geological history, including one that ranks as the fifth largest volcanic eruption of all time. The good news is that these additions suggest activity at the magma-fueled hotspot is actually decreasing, according to a new study. Despite the recent eruption clusters detected in the vicinity of the Yellowstone caldera volcanic vent, the two newly discovered events have been named the McMullen Creek eruption, occurring about 8.99 million years ago, and the Gray's Landing eruption, occurring about 8.72 million years ago, and they significantly match Yellowstone's long-term volcanic timeline and seems to indicate that major eruptions are now occurring much less frequently than before. Scientists were able to use a combination of chemical, magnetic, and radioisotope analysis to link volcanic deposits across tens of thousands of square kilometers, or several thousand square miles joining together geological records that were previously treated as separate. In other words, what is seen as a smaller eruption is actually two giant eruptions. We found that deposits previously believed to be from several smaller eruptions were actually very large sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions around 9.0 and 8.7 million years ago, said volcanologist Thomas Knott, from the University of Leicester in England. The younger of the two, the Grey Landing super eruption, is now the largest recorded event of the entire Snake River Yellowstone volcanic province. It is one of the top five eruptions of all time. According to study data and estimates, Gray's Landing will cover an area the size of New Jersey in ultra-hot volcanic glass, somewhere in the area of 23,000 square kilometers, or 8,880 square miles. It would vaporize anything in its path, and spew a cloud of fine ash across the world. With both newly identified events occurring during the Miocene period, 23 to 5.3 million years ago, that increases the number of Yellowstone super eruptions during that time to six, or one every 500,000 years, on average. Compare that to two super eruptions that are thought to have occurred in the same area over the last 3 million years, on average once every 1.5 million years or so, and seem to be increasingly sporadic. It therefore appears that the Yellowstone hotspot has experienced a threefold decrease in its capacity to produce supereruptive events, Not said. This is a very significant decline. The supereruption, which is described as an extreme landscape-changing event that disrupts the global climate and damages the environment, in a published paper, deserves to be recorded with a power of 8 on the official Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI. But just because they seem less and less frequent doesn't mean we can lower our guard in anticipation of the next catastrophic event even if it may not happen for hundreds of thousands of years. Keeping Yellowstone geysers, mud pots and fumaroles under surveillance remains a must, according to scientists. Even though activity in the Yellowstone region has decreased, that doesn't mean it's not active. Meanwhile, the same technique used here could be applied elsewhere in the future. We hope that the methods and findings that we present in our paper will enable the discovery of many more records of new super eruptions around the world, said Knott.